people think that when you're hiking the most difficult it's to go, go up yeah but once you get more experienced hiker you know that the most difficult is the way down two years uh, ago uh, i was in hospital in uh, coma and respiratory uh, and when i wake up uh, one month later mm, i open my eye and i am blind in one eye So welcome today. Welcome. Camino Teles, we the third podcast, video podcast, and not only because we're on different platforms from YouTube through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many others. Right, Erica? Correct. I'm Ricky, 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 just Ricky. And I'm Erica, 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 just Erica. And what we do, Erica? We have fun. We have fun and uh, while we're talking about Camino de Santiago. Yeah. So yeah, we do it our way, which involves lots of sense of humor, or silliness rather than sense of humor. So in today's episode, we're gonna see the most dangerous places on Camino de Santiago, injury-wise. We are gonna talk about the important uh, piece of equipment, like the shoes. How to choose them, how to wear them, and what precautions to have on Camino de Santiago. We are going to have an interview with, with one of the most favorite pilgrims I have closest to my heart. Uh, I, I walk uh, 600 kilometers from Fatima to Santiago. It's very frequent pilgrim, four-time Camino Portuguese, one-time French Camino. And, and it's not stopping it's here. It's not only stopping there. And on the end, we're going to learn the second part of Ultreya song, the Camino Anthem. Ultreya. But not in that way, in the normal traditional way. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Oh. Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. People think that when you're hiking, the most difficult it's to go, go up. Yeah, but once you get more experienced hiker, you know that the most difficult is the way down. Why? Because of many reasons. Because you have more impact on your bones, on your knees, on your back, on your foot. It can be slippery. Could be the slippery. terrain can be slippery if it's raining or if you have leaves on the floor, on the terrain. You still harder. have a backpack on, so there's a totally different point of gravity. Um, so yeah, the sands are deadly, proper deadly, you know. In Camino Frances we have few... Few men, yeah. Few. It's not easy Camino Frances. There are easier Caminos than Camino Frances. Camino Portuguese is easier. Camino Inglés is easier. Yeah, many other Caminos are easier, but they're also the more difficult Caminos. For example, Camino del Norte is more difficult. Fia de Plata is, is more difficult. Primitivo is much more difficult. So Camino de Santiago, French way, it's somewhere in the middle. The most difficult places on Camino de Santiago, French way, are definitely descent from Fonsebadon. El Alto del Perdón. El uh, Osebreiro. Breiro. <laughs> and of course, famous descent from Ronces Valles to Zubiri. Yeah. Which would be the subject of our today's episode. We've been there, we actually met someone who got injured there, you remember? Yes, I remember because um, she was a lady from the United States and she did this stage, I think a bit faster than she was supposed to. Yeah, the day after I had to take a bus to get to Pamplona because her knee was swollen she, and she was in pain. And I remember that day, you know, I remember because once you're in Camino de Santiago, the from Ronces Valles to Tsubiri, this stage for some people is, is the second or the third and they're brand new to Camino. And they are also happy that the way up finished. Yeah, the way. Yeah. Way there is up. way down, let's run! And it's, it's like it sounds like a big trap, no? Like, yeah, boom! The Pyrenees are yeah. over! <laughs> what to do to not to get injured on the stage, on any other descending stage? Mm -hmm. I think that it all boils down to being present. Like, being in the being moment. Being present, being in the moment, just walk. Think about walking. Like not using your phone. Leave the phone in your backpack, 
Don't look at the map, you have the signs everywhere. And there are many people that we see that actually, you know, they, they're talking on the phone with someone when they're on the Camino, especially downhill, or they're making hundreds of pictures. Which is good, you know, if you like, but... But not going down. No, but there are some stages that you can avoid doing that. Like no going down, no going down. Stage. Guys, that's, that's like difficult, that's dangerous. That's pretty much dangerous, no? Taking your attention out, away from the path. And especially, I remember, we, we woke up that day um, from Roncesvalles, by the way, we spent 14 euros in the big albergue in the in Moronces Valles. There are also beds for 10. Yeah. But you have to ask for them because they're in the basement. And then we went through Burguete, uh, where we had the first coffee. And I remember uh, that's the moment when you're meeting people like international, the couple that was coming, I think, from Switzerland, and they already walked for 1,300 meters. The kilometers. Me kilometers, the <laughs> guy. The guy actually was walking and his bag was like tilted to, to the side. And I came to him and like, listen, your bag is tilted to the side. And he looked at me and said, hey, it's no problem. I already did 1,300 kilometers. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to judge? Yeah, like, um, okay, okay. And then actually you're starting to see the first little villages because it's already a Spanish side of Camino yeah, de we... Santiago. And then when we thought that actually everything is going fine, you know, and we're nearly in the end of the stage. Suddenly, everything got super difficult. We started to walk up in a heat, like long walk up, and then started to go down. Six kilometers left. And we're like walking for six kilometers and say, oh, nine kilometers left. And I was like, what? And it seems like never ending. The path was full of these like cobblestones in the middle of the forest. A really slippery. Um, and yeah, and how you manage in this situation? How? Is there any chances to avoid the possible slips? Go slow, also. Go you, slow. Use the hiking poles. Mm -hmm. Make sure that your shoes have good grip. This being present, this being present, I think it's a crucial. Because even if you know shoes are not good, if you don't have hiking poles, but if you've been present, if you, if you sink into the experience of Camino, no? You can... It, it can work, no? Yeah. That would be the perfect day I would write in the chapter of mindfulness of our journal, page 76. Did it starts with, wherever you are, be there totally. But I suppose that the, the experience of mindfulness, of being present, you can take not only uh, to the stages when you actually have to go down, but no, you can take to other... Always parts of, uh, of the Camino and life. I think it also helps you to slow down yeah. and be, appreciate, like you said, appreciate the nature or appreciate the landscape or appreciate the Camino itself, no? If you, if you don't slow down, if you don't make this conscious practice, you don't even realize that there are birds around mm. or wind sometimes or this breeze, no wind, breeze mm. or the heat on the skin. You don't realize, you give it for granted. You can also apply the mindfulness into the mind, mindful rests during the Camino. See how do you feel, check the body. And then actually helps you to, in the later parts, to see, to listen to the body. Like you say, okay, today I don't want to walk more. No. Many people actually, they, they push the limits so far that they have a tendinitis, they have a wawanitis, they have a so many people, from not listening to themselves, from not perceiving themselves, they might get themselves in trouble. We always recommend health insurance, mainly if you come from outside Europe, mm -hmm. because in um, Europe you can use the... Um, what's it European called? European cards. You can use in the Europe. European card, but if you're going from abroad, probably you will need a health insurance. Yeah. We have one health insurance that we use. We're going to put in the descriptions. Yeah, we managed to get a 5% discount with the link that we put in the description. So if you need one, you can head to the description and find the link. You oh, can take to other always. parts of, um, of the Camino and life, which for example, could be connecting to other pilgrims, not talking to them from the basis of judgment and I like what, if I can say, because we are gonna um, watch to his interview later, Gregory, who says, go 
with open hands and open heart, no? So approach people also with this, yeah. with this in mind. With this in mind. Yeah. No judgment. Open heart and open hands. Inspiring soul. Inspiring. And he did. He walked... Anyway, we're not going to reveal no, that. No, Should no, we no. actually see? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, my name is Gregory. I'm from Poland, uh, from Warsaw. Uh, I start my Camino in 15 of July uh, of May uh, from Saint Jean Pied de Port, uh, Camino Frances. And uh, what inspired you to walk Camino de Santiago? Uh, I was four times uh, in Camino Portuguese. Yes, uh, Camino is my dream. Camino Frances is my dream. Two years uh, ago, uh, I was in hospital in uh, coma and respiratory. Uh, and when I wake up uh, one month later, um, I open my eye and I am blind in one eye. And uh, when I was in uh, my doctor and um, told me my second eye, I go into blinding. And okay, I come back my home and uh, my decision, I go to uh, Camino Frances. I try uh, because uh, and now I don't know it's possible finish my Camino. You mean it's possible your last Camino? Yeah, because uh, if uh, I I blind, I am blind and uh, I sit in home uh, with cat and listen to music. Yeah, no, not walking to to Camino. Uh, but uh, when I was first time in uh, Camino Portuguese, uh, uh, I uh, experience uh, this uh, magic, this road, this way. Uh, uh, this uh, this magic is uh, no no way no road. M magic uh, is uh, in uh, second person. And what is the most memorable moment that you remember from Camino, uh, either Francais or Portuguese? Uh, when I was second time to Camino Portuguese, uh, I walk uh, only one leg no protease uh, at only with with uh, two crutches meet uh, in tui ina and raina from germany ina is uh, sister torsten torsten is a prosthetic master in germany and uh, raina husband uh, ina uh, is director in clinic rehabilitation in germany after um, our meeting uh, uh, invite me in Germany and prepare uh, protis for me after Camino. And uh, when I start to Camino Frances uh, this year, Ina invite me to Germany and prepare new protis special for uh, this Camino ah, Frances. Yeah, nice. yeah. And how how did you prepare mentally and physically? Apart from the prothesis, how did you prepare for this last Camino that was 800 kilometers and more, was more challenging than the Portuguese one? Uh, yeah, uh, Camino Frances is very difficult. Uh, but I, every day I, I am uh, believed um, to God and every day I uh, told uh, Jesus, I trust you. And when I, I wake up, Jesus, I trust you. Uh, I have one eye, I have one leg, uh, I am not strong uh, because uh, after one first one week uh, on the Camino I was in hospital, I take bacteria, but uh, I every day told Jesus, I trust you and I walk. I meet new, new people, uh, new, uh, I listen new story. A new life story. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult story, B but I see on the way, uh, and I am uh, also I am inspiration, motivation for second person. I am only 
cooperate? Yeah, cooperate uh, from GAT. Okay, yeah. you're on, cooperating with GAT. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, on this way. It's, uh, yeah, this for me is Camino. Hmm. And what, talking about the Camino Frances, what do you think has been the hardest point, the biggest obstacle that you found? For me is uh, Alto del uh, Perdon, because uh, when I walk down, it's very uh, small stones. Yeah, and uh, my crotch is a slice, and this part is... Very... You found it more difficult than the way down from Zubiri? Uh, yeah, also, but not uh, similar this uh, this alto, uh, because in Zubiri it's a big rocks, only also slice, uh, but uh, when I walk slowly it's, uh, it's good, it's good. How do you think that walking Camino changed change the perspective you see yourself and your life? Camino change uh, all life, I think, mm, because... Uh, How did it change yours? Uh, uh, I, um, uh, I learned uh, on the Camino, I didn't... Uh, you don't, don't uh, yeah, need a lot. Yeah, I don't uh, need a lot, yeah, uh, only big open heart and open hands and open mind yeah it's it's simply but it's simply but it's difficult yeah yeah is there any advice that you would give to someone that is doubting on his abilities of doing the camino for his condition not fear only yeah if you not try, don't see, yeah? You must try, try. Uh, I told every day uh, I can do it, yeah? You must uh, believe uh, in your, your decision, your, your, uh, your, your fight, determination. Your determination, your, your fight. So what's now after Camino? I was in uh, my doctor with a uh, leg because uh, now it's a problem with foot. It's uh, diagnosis is n no, uh, no good. Uh, maybe visit in hospital and Gibbs and uh, is good, few months. And maybe I must go to amputation okay for me it's also good and uh, prepare second protease and I walk with the protease. And... Uh, what is your next Camino? What is your next Camino? After, just after this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your next Camino? Uh, I hope <laughs> in Camino Portuguese uh, after uh, this problem, yeah. So what is the, be the best part that you cherish after the meeting with Gregory? Well, I liked how it happened because we were in Warsaw. He texted us saying that he was in Warsaw and we were there only for a couple of days without him knowing that we were there. What are the odds that yeah. a person, that, a pilgrim that we met on Camino, texts us when we are in his city? And then we went to see him? Yeah, we went to his house, we had some uh, breakfast together. It's funny, it's funny, it's actually it's funny. funny. <laughs> it's a his sense of humor is really cool, you know, he can <laughs> laugh about from himself. If he likes. Yeah, he can laugh about situation that I wouldn't imagine myself laughing about that and if if you guys are interested in in actually supporting the cause because shortly he's gonna have an an operation and um, then would be a link for the crowdfunding campaign he's trying to save his other leg but the treatment is really costly so if you feel like uh, supporting the cause there would be the link in the description any amount is appreciated yeah, yeah. What about this journal? Tell me more about this journal. A part of my, uh, mindfulness, does it have anything else? So it doesn't have maps or places where to stay, where to eat, 
Useless. Useless. Useless, no? No, it's not useless. Why? Because it will take you through an inner journey. How the title says, the journey within. We created it, taking into account the challenges that we found on the Camino, from the physical pain to the mental and emotional pain, until having breakthroughs. Fears, expectations, worries, letting go, sinking into the coming, loneliness. The loneliness. Yeah. It's for everyone. You don't need to be religious, you don't need to be spiritual. But it's a tool it, it's a tool to enhance the journey. So it's not useless. It doesn't have the kilometers. It doesn't have to have a kilometers. It doesn't have to how have many, the, you ride the kilometers. How many kilometers we have until reaching your, your heart? Deep. That, that's why you don't need kilometers in the book. And if you want to get it, there's a description uh, just in the video. Um, go there and get yourself one. Shoes, shoes, shoes. It's all about shoes, shoes, shoes. It's all Is about shoes, shoes, shoes. I'm making a song of shoes. I'm making a song of shoes. Because we're going to talk about shoes. <laughs> you cannot come for the Camino without good shoes. First, put in the description which are your shoes that you're using. So everyone can go down in the comment section and see what shoes from men and women are the most used and if they are a good fit for Camino. Let's open the conversation. Which are the best Camino shoes? Every foot is different to find what best suits you. True story. From our, from our experience of Camino, because we walked some Caminos, we did some kilometers, not only in Spain, but in many countries. Now we go into Japan to walk the Camino in Japan. 88 temples, Shikoku, uh, which will take us maybe even 90 days. Oof. <laughs> I'm already tired. <laughs> 1,200 kilometers. And we have a shoes. Which shoes are you using for? I'm using the same I used in uh, Camino de Santiago, the New Balance, uh -huh. which they are already well used. So they, they already made some kilometers. The, what are the three important tips about uh, choosing your shoes for Camino de Santiago? They need to be one size bigger. And when you try them on, it needs to feel that you are floating. You, it doesn't need to feel that you have shoes on. It, you, because it's gonna swell after 20 kilometers and many days of walking, your shoes gonna, your feet gonna swell, which uh, will require the bigger shoes just to accommodate this big size uh, hobbit thing. Yeah. What is the other thing for? Other, <gasps> hobbit. Other tip for the uh, for the shoes, amore. Break them in. Break them. What Break does them it mean? In. Use them before your actual camino. Walk some kilometers, 15, 20 a day, for uh, two, three weeks before Camino. Must. It's a must. It's a, uh, there are three different type of shoes that you could use. You can go for the hiking shoes, you can go for the trail running shoes, or you can go for sandals and also barefoot shoes. Mainly, it all depends on the Camino that you do. If, if you're gonna do the Pyrenees uh, everyday hiking shoes, it's, it's all about hiking. So the hiking boots are, are the good options. Also depends on the season, right? Depends on the season. Because if it's winter, hiking boots are better for the snow. The hiking boots would be definitely better. But if in your Camino there's lots of pavement, there's lots of walking, there's lots of uh, way, then the trail runners will be uh, much better because they're much more flexible, much versatile, and they can amortize. I love the word amortize. Exist? I don't know, but uh, we make words. We Camino tell us. You make up words, <laughs> not me. Don't put me in the same. I make up boat. words <laughs> in the dictionary of uh, Ricky amortize, which means to provide enough cushioning in the long. Term walking. Long term. <laughs> They're walking in the hot weather. Probably I wouldn't go for the hiking boots. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't go for Gore-Tex. I wouldn't go for Gore-Tex. I love trail runners, so that's for me the choice for life. 
Would you tattoo a trail runners on, on yourself? Choice, choice for life. Next question. Choice for life. <laughs> and for me, the important part also in the shoes is the drop zero or the closest to the drop zero possible, which is the difference between the heel and the toes. Um, the drop zero, which is no difference. It's like you're walking. It would be a natural walking thing. If you never walked with the drop zero shoes, it will take some time to get used to them because the pressure on the foot is different, but then it will feel the more natural possible. You're also going with a backpack, so it's not something that you have to do overnight. You have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. For me, it's also important. This is why I say every foot is different because what I look into a shoe for me is that it has a white toe box. For me, That's it's a must. a must because I, I have to have my toes like this. No geisha. No geisha. Like this. <laughs> like this. Ta -ta 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 -ta. No geisha shoes. Japan, we're gonna get the kimonos. We're gonna walk with the kimonos. We're gonna walk with a special hat. And also we're gonna walk with a stick, which is not really a stick. It's a Kobodashi in person. That is the monk who initiated this pilgrimage. So once you walk in the uh, Shikoku pilgrimage, uh, you will need to take care special, special care of the stick. With the stick itself, you can't even move the stones because it's disrespectful for the... Uh, and at the end of the day, you always have to clean the bottom of the stick with the special tissue. So we're gonna have lies from Japan, so you can enter with us the most uh, unexpected villages uh, on the Camino in Japan. You can meet amazing craftsmen, you can uh, check the amazing temples, as well as Erika already mentioned to me, you can try amazing food. 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 She told me actually we're gonna have a sushi every day for breakfast, yeah. lunch and dinner. And we are gonna camp. For me, it's the first time, so join the fun. That would be something, something. Christian Paul, Dalila Christian Paul. Dalila Christian Paul, Dalila Christian Paul. Dalila. Thank you for being a member. I shouldn't do it. No. <laughs> Thank you for being a member, guys. There are three new members on our channel today, Dalila, Christian and Paul. What do they get? They get so much stuff. They get so much stuff. You probably get so much footage that you're never going to see it in your life, but yeah. it's so useful that you should. You get the guide, the guide answering all the questions. Mm -hmm. All the live Q&A that we've done since January which is a lot. Weekly live Q&A that we had, all the live streams from Camino Frances. And that's why if you're a premium member. Yeah, that's if you're a premium member, interviews with Hospitalero or fellow pilgrims. And? Hugs and love and, hug. and appreciation. So go to the page, there is a, a join button and you can choose your perks that you choose. There are three different ones. You can welcome a uh, welcome pack, welcome Camino it's for the best euros. members. Three mm. euros. There is um, a premium, which is a tenner. And if you feel like some personal one-to-one -one sessions, we offer also a coaching. But you know what I would like also? Well, that people subscribe to yeah, us. Yeah, I would love that they press that subscribe button. I think you should, guys. Erica would, would make Erica so happy. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're still not subscribed, it doesn't cost actually nothing. And if you already there, please press the uh, like button. That also helps us to spread this video to many other people. Shemendete. No, se hace uno, due, tre. Quando sei io che parte tu? Uno, due, tre. Shemendete, cheman de foi. La millionaire de l'Europe. La voix lactée de Charlemagne, c'est le chemin de tous les jacquets. Ultraya, ultraya, et 
su seia, Deus ayuda. This is the second part of the Anthem of Camino de Santiago. If you've missed the first one, that's in our previous episodes. Every time you sing this anthem, you, you, you connect. You unite with thousands of millions, millions of pilgrims that walked Camino de Santiago throughout uh, many different stages, mountains, hills, many sorrows and many happy moments. And you know that you're not alone. Mm. You are not the first one, you are not the last one. Mm. And you can feel it on the, once you walk the Camino, you can feel it. It's something really special, no? Mm -hmm. We're gonna uh, learn this song also on our retreats. Yeah. And Saint Jean Pierre de Port. We are gonna do it in May, in May, in September, if there is enough interest. So we set up um, a form in which you can choose the date in May or September that best suits your, your Camino. Small family groups, the really personalized experience of envibing the Camino, learning about the Camino spirit beforehand. Uh, arriving from wherever you are because sometimes it takes time just to uh, sing and do the Camino, fully enjoy it, not to just run into it from your airplane. The retreat will be around three days. We are gonna do many different activities that connect also to the to the same theme of the journal. I think the rain is there so maybe we should conclude. Conclude. Let's conclude today's episode. What, do, what did you learn today? It's good to slow down and be present. If you have a stage 20 kilometers plus and it's going down, take it easy. Do it less. Your body will thank you. And don't rush to, to the, your next stage, to the next stop. I've also learned that the impossible is only the mother of, of the limits that you put in the head. And the joy also is a matter of the choice. Thank you, Gregory, for, for this big lesson. If anyone feels like supporting the cause or maybe even um, sending the message or on encouraging, please put those also yeah. in the comments. He will read them. He, he will, will read, read the your comments. message, your prayers. So put down in the comments if you have any good wishes to him. And it will be strongly appreciated as well, yeah? What the emotional, no? What the emotional podcast today, no? Mm-hmm. Baby? Okay. Anything else? No. We have everything. Qué antipático que sí. No, 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 porque si yo lo digo algo después dices, no, pero aquí estaba diferente. Ah. You're not gonna put this yes. in there. I will. In the beginning. <laughs>